Hey there, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour and we work through projects from beginning to end. So usually today I would be working again on my Charming Chevrons quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. It's a fun uh, quilt with some zigzags. Uh, we are in the free motion quilting process of that right now, but if you've been with me here for a little while, you know I've been having some trouble with the belt on my sewing machine. And I got one in the mail from Amazon today. This is just a generic, uh, generic belt. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's the right size. I've tried to do some research, but it's been really tough going. I even have the part list in the manual and I haven't been able to find it through that part. So I think through some research, this may be the right size. If not, we'll pull the old belt out today and uh, uh, see how it goes. <laughs> see, see for real what size it is. I was just afraid to pull it out uh, before um, because we were sewing on it still. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I was supposed to get it this Sunday, the, the sun, uh, yesterday, the belt, and I was going to play around with it then, but it didn't come till today. So I thought we'd go splunking into the sewing machine today and see if we can figure it out. I have never changed the belt. I've only seen this part of the sewing machine open before when I've brought it in. So this, this may be a disaster, but it may not. Maybe we'll actually fix it. Regardless, when we're done with that tonight, whether we hit a snag and have to stop or, or we fix it and it's great, uh, with the time we have left, I am going to hand stitch more on the Splendid Sampler uh, 2 block by uh, Rebecca Bryant here. So cute, cute. We have to do all the hand stitching around there. So we'll work on that again uh, tonight as well. So all right, guys, I am going to uh, work on this. Uh, Joe, I didn't contact the sewing machine guy again, so he's, this is like the third time uh, I've brought it into the sewing machine place, and he put on a belt that ha is full of cracks, which make it slip and jump um, when I'm trying to sew, especially with this free motion quilting. Um, it's just stalls every once in a while. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just try and figure it out myself this time. If worse comes to worse, I'll bring this back in. But, you know, I thought we'd give it a try tonight first. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we will give it a go. We will be breaking into the sewing machine tonight. All right, and here's the little baby right here. Okay, so I think, you know, I did, I did watch a video on this. Um, it's the only video I could find. You know what? Let's just slide it right on the towel. And uh, it was kind of like this sewing machine, but not, not quite. Uh, but I think in theory, I can just pop this off. I have to unscrew all these guys and pop off the side and then I can access everything. Although I may have to, uh, undo the bottom one too. I know <laughs> packs, right? So if you've been, um, perusing my Facebook over the weekend, I, for some stupid reason, uh, decided to go on Facebook Marketplace and just type in vintage sewing. And oh my God, I could not believe all the vintage sewing machines. Oh my gosh, I need more leverage. Um, vintage sewing machines that popped up in my feed. Uh, I'm gonna have to try and get it with this little one here. Man, we might be stalled. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was like, we might not be even be able to get past the uh, the uh, screw here. But I did find <laughs> I did find a sewing machine, a Kenmore like this actually a little earlier than this one. I'm thinking, um, maybe by a decade or two. Um, but it was pink, and it was in a white case. Ooh, jeez. Okay, ah, stuff falling out all over. Okay, we need to keep track where these things went. So this little disc was on first, then then this guy. Oh, and now this guy comes off. Ooh, this feels connected to something. So I think, oh man, we might just have to pull and hope I don't bust anything. Which I think is what the guy did too. I wonder if I have to, it almost feels like it's ready to pop off. Hmm. 
Maybe I pull this off a little bit more. Maybe that guy got has to go. So this will be interesting. We'll be figuring this out. All right. So here, are oh, you scared? Scared to look? Yeah, that pink sewing machine would have been so cool, but it. It really needed a lot of work, and I seriously have no room whatsoever uh, to have that in here, especially in a cabinet that large. Oh, you know what? It looks like I can't pull this off. There's two screws here, so let's let's undo those as well. And hopefully let's not have them fall in the machine. Oh, you're taking your computerized machine to be cleaned on Friday. Nice. Yes, it looked like the 50s pink. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, Bonnie. I'm thinking it maybe was from the 50s because uh, it was pink. And actually, the, the case that it was in, if the case was original, that looked probably around that era, too. It was so cute. Oh. But they're first of all, they're asking $100, which isn't, you know... I'm more than willing to pay $100 for a vintage sewing machine. Someone needs to rescue them. I'm still of the someone needs to rescue these poor, beautiful sewing machines. But for our area, um, there are so many, and a lot of them are just free. Uh, and that one looked like it had quite a bit of damage. I would have to replace the, um, the little, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, but the little rubber joint that spins the the motor belt and um, it was really dirty and it definitely looked like it needed a new cord and maybe foot pedal and all that and the cabinet was pretty dang um, in a poor looking position too so a uh, hundred dollars I think was definitely a little high for it but again, I don't have space, so it's just silly to even silly to even talk about. It was stupid to go look in the first place. But man, I could not believe in this Minneapolis area how many amazing vintage sewing machines there were. There was one that was selling these old vintage singers. So like a, a Singer Red Eye, which is um, one of those old Singer, I think, 66s with um, all this red detailing on it. They're selling one of those for $15, and man, I don't know, just some cool stuff. All right, can I pop this off now? It feels like I should be able to just pop this off somehow. <laughs> this is so weird and dangerous. Okay, come on, machine. I saw the dude just pop you off somehow. Maybe there's another screw somewhere. Oh, am I lifting? I think I just gotta get up a little higher. We're kind of almost out of there. Ah, goodness. And this isn't the this isn't the belt I want to replace either. You know what? I think I'm gonna leave this here, and we're gonna we're gonna yes, Gretchen. I think that's where we're headed next. I'm gonna uh, undo the base, and we'll start there. The base is where we can actually see what's happening um, with the belt that we actually need to change. So let's let's head there. Okay, I just gotta remember I got my little pieces over here. This has a pile of screws that I need to undo as well. Luckily, I'm a little more familiar with the base here because um, I've taken this off before to oil it. And, and every time I do that, then that's when I discover, oh, this belt, motor belt, has a whole pile of notches out of it. Oof, that needs a little bit more. It's always kind of fun to, to dig into these machines. I know, I still wonder why we can't get fancy pink colored sewing machines now, or just any sewing machine now. There's actually, um, oh gosh, we looked it up that one time. There's a person that paints only Singer featherweights. He only does featherweights, but he will uh, paint those all custom. I think he uses like car paint, automotive paint, 
and uh, he'll paint those and then re and reapply decals to it so it looks like an amazing featherweight. You can get it any color, like you can get it bright, like cherry red if you want, you know what I mean? Um, or like a teal, or you can even get like any car color where it's like iridescent and you know changes colors as you move around it sort of thing uh but he'll he'll do that for featherweights but dang that shouldn't that be like a common practice i'm totally with it some of those vintage machines you know you got green machines and a few others but man not many and, and nowadays they're all just white and boring maybe we'll put a little decorative decals on it somewhere but it's not not full-on color that's for sure all right this is our last screw now i should be able to pull this off and here i can show you guys what the problem has been so this is the belt that i want to uh change this one right here so if i turn the dial here you can see um all the notches that are oh geez like this one's totally almost broken in half all these little notches out of it um so i need to somehow still be able to get up to this side here oh but yeah maybe there's a screw or something or maybe i have to just so in the little uh thing i did watch i had to kind of loosen maybe i have to loosen this so we're just going to go for it. This is a mechanical thing. In theory, I should be able to put everything back, right? So I'm just going to loosen this. Yeah, see, there the motor goes. And now I should be able to push it up. Yeah, and I can, I can at least kind of access this. But I still I need to somehow get that top off. Oh, it almost looks like there's another little screw right there. Well, how is one supposed to get in there? And it's Phillips. It's a Phillips head. What the heck? That can't be. All right, but I do think this was um, to unscrew because then I can get this off. I can almost do that right now. Oops. Bumped, yeah. I'm gonna just get in close this way. Oops, sorry guys. My phone thing's going everywhere. Oh, this is the belt te tensioner? Okay, well that's perfect because I needed a uh, looser now so I can get up in there. Man, it's almost like this motor is too big. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna tighten that up again a little. Wow, this doesn't even look like it needs the lug nut. So this is a or lug, lug belt, so this is a lug belt has all these little notches, and I would have expected that this would have a bunch of little notches in here for the sake of turning it, but um, there's a couple other types of belts, like a like a V belt and a, uh, a just like a rubber, a round rubber belt, and it almost looks like, why wouldn't I have one of those in? Oh, maybe because of the other side. So let's let's see if I can still somehow release this thing but let's man it, it does look like it's attached with some screws maybe i can just loosen that uh, i don't know let's set it up on its side again okay this may be as far as we get tonight, but let's let's just keep going a little longer. I want to figure out how to get this off here. So it almost looks like I can just pop it off, but I'm wondering if I need to undo those screws. Like I just need it a little higher and it'll pop out, but <sighs> this definitely needs to come off though for us to see in here. I 
Maybe this whole thing can pop off. No, because we need that because that's where the second guy is on. All right, well, I think we need to access those, um, those two little screws. So if you see way in there, let's see, can we see from here? Yeah, right there. So do you guys see that tiny little screw? Let's see if I can even get that in focus. Oops, hold on, cancel. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. There, so uh, I think there's a screw right there. I think I need to unscrew that and I think there's one a little higher that I need to um, unscrew. Hold on, I'm gonna try and, I can never zoom very well. Zoom, there we go. All right, so, uh, hmm. Do you think there's any other way I would be able to do that? I can move these guys out of the way. Let's move these out of the way. We're just gonna keep unscrewing things, unscrewing things from this. So I gotta tell you guys, um, a year ago, no way would I be going into the machine and, ooh, gosh, that was tight. Um, would I be going into the machine and trying to move things around like this? So this is the way that I can um, do this, or the fact that I can do this. Uh, now, with, with kind of enough confidence, yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to do that enough confidence that I can maybe get this to work. <laughs> that I can take this apart this much and then think I can have the mindset of, oh, oh yeah, I can put this back together. That's big for me. I've never, uh, never been like this much into the machine and uh, I would always bring it to the, to the sewing machine guy, but you know what? We're gonna try and still do this. But yeah, there's gotta be a way for that to pop out, maybe on the side, I can do it. It looks like it's one of these things where you just rest, rest the little bits in and then pop it out. I don't want to bust it either. Okay, my finger is up in there. There's a trick to this, for sure. So yours, this belt comes off. Well, see, like, the problem is this is connected to the belt, so I can't just pull that off. I need to be able to pop both of these off. Maybe I just yank the whole thing. I don't know guys, this might be a bust, which is, you know, I knew was gonna be a potential option. Why aren't you popping out? I think this whole element should be able to pop out, is kind of what it looks like. So in theory this should be easy, right? Oh, this black switch, that's the on and off switch. So that's, that doesn't seem too much in the way. Ooh, now I'm feeling like I'm gonna hurt it. I'm gonna put it back up. See if we can dig in here again. Okay. Oh, you're gonna Google it? Yeah, I did a little searching. It is, it's not actually all that easy to find anything on it. But yeah, this definitely has to come apart. This has to come off so I can access all these belts. And it seems like it would be easy. Like this thing's gotta be able to pop off. No, that's connected. 
just pull a little bit more. Huh. And it really looks, ooh, I think I got one popped out. It just looks like, there we go. All right. Now I think we can, well, well, we have access to this now, so here we go. <laughs> so uh, here we go. It, it had like just these little nubbins. I don't know if I can get it off of there though, but it has these little uh, just metal bits so that, um, you know, it can just be pushed in and out of place here. Ooh, it looks like I scraped the, the thread a little bit. But now it looks like we have access to uh, this belt here. So let's try and dig in there now. I'm going to get you guys over here. So it looks like it goes around this belt here, which also does not have... Um, it does not have these lug things on. Oh, this one doesn't either. All right, so somehow we have to get this off. Oops, but it <laughs> it's in be it's behind this one. So here, maybe we can pull it up from this side. There we go. <laughs> it's like way stuck in here. Like it feels like this thing should be able to come forward a little bit. You know, this is an old machine. I, I feel like we can't hurt it too much. I definitely think we're missing missing something here. Yeah, so this one has two belts, which makes it a little different than some of the ones that I've seen online. It has one from the wheel to here, and then one from this guy down underneath to the motor. So I don't know why that is, because... A lot of these just have one belt. Okay, this looks like it has to move forward. You know what? This might be why it took the dude so long last time. It, it's just a little, a little different than what it should be. So, all right. If I look at this, I would assume this thing can move a little bit to allow us to get this belt in here, in and out. I could just cut it since it's all jacked anyway. Don't cut because you have to get the new one back in. That's true. So the new one, I think I'll feed up from the bottom. Like I can feed up from the bottom. So here's the new one. And I should be able to... Oh wait, how would I get that around? Maybe I have to take off this belt. Do I dare undo this thing? <laughs> Oh goodness. Yeah, maybe that was too tight. Now this does not look like it moves anywhere except for in place. Hmm. I'm going for it. We're going to unscrew this thing. There we go, that immediately loosened this up. <laughs> we maybe just bring all these parts to the sewing machine guy. But hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we actually figure this out? Oh man, now it feels like something fell in the machine. Okay, <laughs> that thing's off. All right, so that went in here, but I also think it might have dropped a bolt or something, or the, the nut on the other side might have fell in, but at least we can get this out now. And this guy can come in, but now we gotta find the bolt that potentially <laughs> fell. So here we go, we're gonna just, Lift this up. Did anything fell? Oh yeah, here we go. There we go. Needed a little nut there. 
we're doing it. I think we got it here. So um, I think there's an easier way to do this. Like I think I think um, the stupid whole front should be able to come off easier. Well, actually, no. Maybe I can pull it off. Ha ha! <laughs> oh goodness. So so that's off now. So now I think I can hold the bolt back there again. And let's screw this thing in again. But actually, before I do that, let's let's get the belt in there. There we go. Oop. Great. Drop something else. This is probably on the back. That looks decent. All right. Belt is on, kind of. It's at least in this weird back position. Okay, I'm gonna start screwing this in. I still gotta get that nut in the back. This is the new belt. This is the new belt right here. I feel like this should just push in. All right, well, we're gonna screw it in and then I'll have to screw that bolt on, or the nut on in the back. Wow, it's got it's kind of eaten up here though. This this belt a little or the motor or this round thing. <laughs> this is not the motor. This is uh, some round thing. All right, now a nut in the back here. I know for a fact there's got to be an easier way to do this because this is insane. All right. So I'm going to tilt it underneath and I'm going to put this belt on now. There, I think you guys can see a little bit better now. But here, here's my new belt. Um, you know, I don't even know if this is the right length. I think it was. All right, we're going to call it the right length. I did do a little research on that, so <laughs> but I should have measured both. So all right, let's, let's flip this underneath again uh, because we want to get this on the motor. So let's just get this guy in check and then we'll try and get that other second belt on the belt that goes from here, uh, onto the wheel, um, up there. So, all right, I'm going to tilt this over again. This seems like it should totally be easier, but all right. So now this goes on the motor here and I've loosened that. So I should be able to, relatively easy easily pop this on there we go okay so now i should be able to tighten this up again i need you guys to, to help me figure uh, remember what order we're going in so i can pull it down a little bit just to tighten it all right well that looks right maybe a little looser than before but maybe that's a good thing I mean it seems to be moving it so I don't know I think we're good um, so yeah so here we go see like now now you can look at this look this is how this orange one was just completely cracked and we have none of those none of these cracks in the in the uh, in the in the, this new black one so <laughs> Hence my problem. So whenever, whenever this part of the motor would hit one of these notches, it would stall or it would zip ahead really fast. So stall and zip ahead. Um, so that's that's kind of the problem. So nope. The so some some of these you can buy these belts that have the teeth on both sides. But I knew that this belt only had it on the on the one on the one side. So um, man, but look at this. What a joke, right? Ugh, so annoying. All right, let's uh, flip this up and try and get that front on again. Or the wheel, oh my God, that's so heavy. Let's try and get this wheel on again. All right, so, uh, so this goes, so look, so now this is, this one's dual sided here. I don't know why, um, but so now this hooks on here. So the first, the first belt, here's the first belt is going around this disc and then there's a smaller disc here that goes around the wheel here. So I wonder if I have to click these things in first. 
Let's see, how did we do this before? Let's, I'm gonna get you guys up in here. All right, so I need to get it on the wheel on here and this belt on this disc. And I had that problem of getting this thing on and off. <laughs> so we'll have to deal with that too. Oh, they're kind of a separate deal here. So it looks like maybe we could set this thing up, then get these guys down here. All right, so now this, this guy's kind of a back in place. <laughs> Stay. All right, and now maybe we can get this wheel in here. We're gonna all be pros at least at this one, at this one type of sewing machine we'll be pros at uh, one of these days. All right. So I'm kind of ah, locked in here again. Oops, sorry guys. I'm gonna get you up high here. So now what I, I'm just trying to, uh, this white piece is kind of in here again and uh, I need to somehow kind of stretch this over. Ooh, maybe I can just move the wheel. Ha ha! Check that out. Okay, there we go, popped in place. Now let's just, <laughs> okay, so the needle is not going yet. So I wonder, oh wait, it's thinking about it. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back down again. Oh, maybe I have to, oh, I know why. We gotta screw all this stuff back in. All right, <laughs> let's screw in all this wheel stuff and see if we can see if this thing is um, gonna turn. So this guy kind of fits into these little notches here. And then we screw this on. Oh, needle is turning. Okay, great. So let's tighten this guy. And then I wanna flip it down underneath Oh, you know what? I got the, these screws up, up top here to do yet too. But I think this is in as far as it goes. So, all right, just screw in these little top screws. Learning all about the machine uh, today. Let's try the little, the little ones. I am nervous about dropping these into, into the machine. Ah. There we go. Oh yeah, right here. This is this is the other one that goes here. And then all the other ones go on the bottom. So there's one and here's the other one. I always kind of try and keep them organized like all the little parts when I take them out, I maybe didn't do that as well tonight, but um, so all, all my parts that were for this side piece were on my right, and then all the parts for the bottom were on my left. I think we're getting this in. Holy man, though, that was, that was more wrenching around um, than I thought. Oh, I should oil it yet, so um, I don't think I needed to, I think I can still access the things I need to oil um, while this is on. But yeah, let's let's give this top an oil. I'm gonna I am gonna oil a little bit on this wheel thing. But let's let's hit all these top parts now that, that we're open here. I'm gonna rotate you guys first and we'll hit the top parts, then we will check underneath oil and clean that real quick and then this guy I'm hoping should be running like a freaking charm that's the plan though <laughs> I know we need a, a, a we need to hang a sign on your door missing repair service okay I think I actually kind of remember from last time we old oiled we're just kind of looking for all these little holes and these screws that's kind of Anything that turns almost, but a lot of times there's, um, 
there's visuals to kind of let you know where to go. Not so much on this top part. But all right, I think we're fine. Oop, let's, let's get in there. OK, but over here, you can see in here, let's see if I can make that light up. Oops, cancel. I don't know, maybe you guys can see there's like a little hole there. There we go, and it, and it moves. Every time there's like a little hole like that, that's kind of, uh, it's like, hey, here's where you oil me. So you throw a little dot of oil into there. You know, and even on, on these little dudes, you see, you see the little dot on there. Well, it looks like we're trying to reconnect here, guys. It's not working very well tonight, it looks like. I'm going to hang in, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to hang in here for a little bit longer. Hey guys, it's me again. We're going to try this again. It looked like it disconnected. Uh, we're in the middle of fixing my machine. I just put in, with some aggressive pulling and figuring it out, we just put in a new belt. Look at this old belt, how, how cracked it was. So this is what I needed repairing because it was... It was sliding, the belt was just moving all along, um, just crazy. Look, there's like 20 different uh, little cuts in here. So I think we got that part figured out. I'm just giving it an oil. We gotta check the bottom, uh, see if it's uh, working, but I have never done that before. Replaced the belt uh, by myself. We had a lot of figuring out to do. So uh, I, think I, see, I think I see you guys starting to pop back in. Um, you know, it's one of these things, who knows if it's the phone or Facebook or what, but we were, uh, we were disconnected. So I'm back here. Uh, I'm just going to continue oiling this really quickly because we got it open. Uh, might as well oil it and then we will uh, flip it underneath and uh, move the move the wheel, see if the bottom belt moves, but the needle's moving, so I think we're okay. And we'll quickly oil up the bottom. We will uh, close it all up again, and I think there is still a little time like to stitch for five minutes on this guy. Uh, so that would be pretty cool. So, all right, let's get to it again. Flipping you around. All right, so we still have the top open here. I think we're done oiling this, though. I do want to quickly... Ooh, quickly oil this front so the front pops open here and here again you can see all these hints of hey oil me here uh, that's uh, whenever it has like a little a little hole like that it's wanting you to drop a little dab of um, oil in there like one just one drop is is fine so we're gonna just kind of peer at some of the other little bits around here real quickly and um, put some dabs of oil in here. And since I can turn this and the needle's moving, it makes me think that the belt is working fabulously, which I'm so excited about. That's one, one more thing I don't have to go to the sewing machine guy for because we figured it out. <laughs> It took some doing, but but we figured it out. I think um, I think it'll go easier next time. But dang, how annoying to have to um, have to do this again. Here's that belt again, just just to show you guys what we were dealing with. Um, it would just slide, slide, and act crazy every time it hit one of these. But ugh, how annoying. All right, I think we're ready to flip this to its back again. Ooh, ah so heavy okay let's get underneath here this is what I want to see so here is the new belt it's it's not orange anymore it's I got just a generic belt I could not find I could not find this uh, for the life of me the one that you know is meant for this machine but it's looking like it's moving I think we're we're good here Oh, it's so exciting. It's totally moving and working. Okay. <laughs> I feel so good about that. 
Uh, let's give all of this a little oil real quick since we are down here. Oh man, I'm so glad we didn't take all this apart too. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. Maybe I should order a spare one of these. I mean, this one looks like it does go through a lot. I mean, it's pivoting around this little itty bitty area here. So I'm sure there's some wear and tear on that. Um, so yeah, you know what? It probably wouldn't be a horrible idea to get another one. Uh, at least, at least, oh, you know what? I'm gonna write down in the memos. There's a little memo area in my, um, in the sewing machine manual. I'm gonna write down which one this is. So this is the 13, see, look, here we go, in the, the memo. It's a lug motor belt. So that's some of the research I, I figured out. So um, lug motor belt. I'm going to say the part that goes around motor. The belt part that goes around motor. Um, that's 13 and 3 quarters inch. So um, it's the 13 and 3 quarters inch and it's smooth on one side and it's got the jaggies on the other side. <laughs> so hopefully hopefully that picture will, will help me out. Um, all right, so I'll know I'll know to get that and I got it on I got it on Amazon last time so I'm just gonna write Amazon got from Amazon because um, then that's just a reminder that now I can go into um, my my sold item. So yeah, so you mentioned the feed the feed dogs. So this is the problem with the feed dogs. And I don't know at all how to fix this. So I've looked at this. So all right, right here is where I move the feed dogs up and down. So let's let's get a little further back. So in theory my feed dogs should be down right now and in here it's up and it it kind of gets stuck here now too. So something's totally not right. Um, but here, so you can see what's supposed to happen. Right here, if the feed dogs are up, there's a little, oh, see it's totally busted now. There's a little notch. No, oh, I don't think I can get in there. There's a little like piston thing that goes into this hole. And when it's down, it's supposed to come out of that hole. You can kind of see through here. Up, oh, see see right there. So up, it's supposed to go into this hole and then, then the feed dogs will be up. Down, it should come all the way out and then the feed dogs should come down. Like this, this, this thing should um, not move or like this, this whole thing should pop down, but there's a little bit that's blocking the way. Um, if I could get in here, there's a little bit in there that's blocking the way from it going down. But if you look over here, look, it looks like some jerry-rigged thing a little bit happening in here. Um, something just is not quite right. Like some somebody was jiggering something in here. Like this looks, this looks like it's supposed to go down a little li li lower to clear this area. So there's something, there's something bigger going on um, with, with this for sure. It's mechanically, it can't go any farther. Like this needs to be able to go up this way for this to work. And it's just, it just doesn't have access to that. Um, I will try oiling it right now. Um, I don't, I think I've tried doing that in the past and it just not, oops, sorry guys, I keep totally bumping you. Let's just oil some of these other parts that move. But yeah, this bar, this lever should come all the way down. Ooh, and you know what? Oh, did it just come all the way down? No, it's still, it is coming down, but the feed dogs aren't lowering still. See, like, I think the problem is here maybe. It just needs to go a little bit further. Like I need to pull it this way a little bit. I don't know. 
so this is this is the part that I, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me it needs a belt. I know, right? Uh, this is the part that I just can't figure out. And now I, I think I got to jam the other way now. Oh, there. <laughs> I popped it all the way back in, though, now. So you see there? So maybe that just needed some oil to pop back in. Um, you can see the nubbin out here. But you see how it has a little bit of a point. It's that... It's that point that I can't get all the way over to get these feed dogs down. So I'm going to just try one more time here. Oh, yeah, see, that does not want to move well. Okay, but now it should be down. But if you look in there, it's still just barely being blocked by, by the, little, the little point. Like, this little point doesn't get over far enough. Just try and force it. Yeah, I can push it up back a little bit, but it's something to do with how they kind of jiggered this. So I don't know if I need to tighten something or what, but I just can't get that point far enough. So anyway, this might um, this I might have to go back in, uh, go back in for. But oiling it did did allow me to put put it um, have it go back all the way up, which is nice. So in theory, the feet should be down. In theory, the feet should be up. It, it's just not doing it. Maybe something needs to be oiled in here too. Let's 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 dig into this a little bit more. <laughs> We're totally in mechanical land tonight. Yeah, maybe this just needed some oiling. Come down. Should we force it? <laughs> Forcibly try and do something? No, I think we're still blocked a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, that is my feed dog scenario. So I think we're going to just call it there for the feed dogs. Well, I'm wondering if it needs scrubbing. Oh, scrubbing, scrubbing with a bristle brush and then rewired. Um, that could be. I just can't, can't quite figure it out. It just needs to go over farther, but this thing seems to be locked up too. You're right. I don't know. Anyway, We'll just uh, let that be for now. Uh, but that's, you know, we t we've talked about the, the uh, presser foot, or the, uh, the feed dogs not being able to lower a bunch of times. I suppose we should clean this out right away. Just do a quick little brush. We, we did do this recently, so it's actually not too bad. I'm not seeing a lot of fuzz. I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get this back up and running here. We'll add a little. Well, nah, I think we're fine. All right, let's get the base back on here. I am just totally stoked with that belt, though. That's, that's huge. That was not, man, I, I could not go back to that place and have them put on another uh, horrible belt like this. So, all right, let's uh, get all these screws. I have my five screws on the bottom here. There's a... This one has a big screw in because I think if you attach this to a table, uh, this is where you do that. Oh, yeah, it's kind of, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's jammed by the bobbin case. Yeah, I'm going to have to spend, I know, I want to I got. I want to do it a test, a test of it, Nolene, just to hear it humming, see if it just sounds nice, sounds nice for the first time. This will literally be the first time probably that I sew on it without a belt um, that's cracked, so sewing it on it with a nice belt so maybe it make, it'll make a a big difference that'd be nice but yeah I, I might just have to spend a day putzing with that uh with the feed dog situation but you kind of you kind of get why i stopped like how i you know i got i got so far and then i and then i couldn't do it anymore and you guys, I'm thinking all of a sudden that maybe I won't work on the Splendid Sampler block tonight just because my hands are all full of oil right now and I don't want to, I don't want to handle that block too much. So let's just, we'll give this a test. I'll find some fabric quick and we'll, uh, we'll give this a test. You know what, I think I, I think I even have, um, 
some quilting stuff here. We could try try some quilting stuff. Oh, I don't think I have. I just have a normal presser foot on. Well, we'll just sew normal. We'll just sew some straight lines. Oh, okay, we are together again. Let's flip this up. My little baby. Oh, baby's heavy. Okay, get this guy up on top again. Just sits on here, I cracked it. Um, oops, sorry guys. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I screwed, um, I screwed some of the towel into the base, so we got some towel sticking out of the back of here, but oh well. Um, okay, let's, let's find some fabric and plug this sucker in and give it a go. I had it unplugged when, so here's the plug, I got that right here. I had it unplugged when we were working on it. Um, all right, let's see. I have some muslin scraps here. Oh, it's already on. Ugh. See, like, right here, when I lower this, it's supposed to make these little jaggedy feed dogs um, go down, but they're not, it's not even do. it's not doing a single thing um, when I, when I move that. Yeah, it might just be locked up, though, you're right. Maybe I just need to really yank at it. Um, all right, we need a bobbin, and we need some thread in here. Okay. Let's put some of this blue thread in so we can see it. Oh, I'm excited. Man, it was so smooth, that, that new belt. So, man, I bet you it just sounds completely different. Wow, I'm really happy that we managed to figure that out, though. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me today um, while I putz around uh, fixing my machine. But I know I was so scared always to take the machine apart, so hopefully maybe you're not so scared of <laughs> digging into your machine now either. I figure it can hopefully be put back together. All right, let's go. Wow, so I don't know if it's the oiling or the belt, but it really does sound smooth, doesn't it? Let's grab a little scissors here. Oh my gosh, it sounds really smooth. I can't hear... Man, it, there's like... There really was some clacking before, wasn't there? My tension's a little off, but in general... That is some smooth sound in sewing. Wow, yeah, the only sound I'm hearing about is is from right here. I'm not um, I'm not hearing like an overall like ker chirk ker chirk ker chirk like movement. Um, which I feel like, I feel like I could kind of hear the whole machine earlier, but now I'm hearing it right here and that's it. So, man, I think we are going to be in some happy times here. So, yay! All right, that is great. I am so happy about that. Um, yeah, you know what, guys? I don't think I'm going to work on this block. I don't want to handle it too much just because I... Uh, my hands are pretty oily, but we will come back in one of these days and uh, stitch around this edge. I've only had I only have like four stitches here. I need to stitch the rest down. But yeah, Adrian, I think I think you're right. A thousand percent better. Um, yes. So the free motion quilting. I wonder if we could try that real quick. Um, let's just take this foot off real quick and throw the free motion. I mean, I mean, I don't have my table here. I don't really have a big working surface, but. <coughs> Here we go. Get this guy on. We'll just give this a little test too. Just to at least hear how pretty it sounds. So this is, you know, we did a little, a little free motion test on there. We'll do that again. I need to bring the bobbin thread up.
Come on, there we go. All right, let's, are we down already? Yep, okay. Ooh, let's go on zero. And I think we should be fine now. Oh wow, I have nowhere to move with this. Let's let's just kind of hold it like this. Oh wow, you guys, it feels so much smoother. <laughs> it is insanely so much smoother than before. Okay, I am super stoked for tomorrow. Whoa, okay, that feels so much different. So here we go. I just did this really, really quick. Um, it just moves. It's so, so different than before. Okay, so tomorrow, hopefully we have no problems whatsoever. Oh, see, now i got to work on the tension again, but um, we'll, we'll work on the tension tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow we will be back on uh, the... the um, Charming Chevron's quilt, and we're free motion quilting the Charming Chevron's quilt with all sorts of fun little bits here. Um, we were in the middle of a row uh, last time, so we will pick that up tomorrow with a fresh belt. I am so excited. Oh yeah, maybe it won't. Um, maybe it won't overheat anymore either, because my pedal has been getting super overheated even after replacing uh, the electric. Yes, I won't be fighting the, the machine anymore. Okay, we are in a new world starting tomorrow. I am so excited. This literally is the first time I will have sewn on this without with a belt that doesn't have cracks in. So, yay! All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around, and we will call it an evening here. Okay, I am so, so excited, you guys. <laughs> uh, I did not, I wasn't sure we would be able to get this thing fixed uh, at all, just because, well, for a while, I didn't know if I would be able to pull that thing, that whole, uh, the side of the machine off. But, yeah, I think now, if we had to do it again, we probably, we probably, it'd probably be just as difficult, but we do it in half the amount of time, I think. But man, so I, hopefully I won't have to deal with that. But one less thing I got to go to the sewing machine guy for. So that's awesome. So uh, if you guys <laughs> have never uh, dug into your machine, go for it. Uh, just remember where you put all the screws, put them back in order, take photos if you need to. But it's a mechanical thing. It, it, it can get fixed. Uh, so I'm, I'm stoked. I'm so happy we figured that out. Thanks for cheering me on and hanging out with me, you guys. Uh, I'm really excited for tomorrow, this free motion quilting again. I think it'll go super duper. Uh, it, it's, it's just a cheapy belt. Oh, the, the new, the replacement belt was, I think, $7. So that's not bad as far as things go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I'm just thinking they had belts hanging around at the sewing machine place and they just, they probably just get old sitting on the shelf. It's just rubber, you know, plastic. So I'm thinking they just, it's probably a 30 year old belt that they've had sitting in this place for 30 years, who knows? <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, that was really helpful having you guys here for this and helping me out. Uh, and I will be back tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So uh, I will get, um, oh, I'll get this up on YouTube as well if, if you want some help uh, changing your belt for your machine, potentially. So that will go on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here. So awesome. Have a great evening, guys. Good night.